very clearly the, um, that there were not too many any pivotal results in the field of breast cancer. There were a lot of interesting contributions. I think most awaited were the results of the Natalie trial. That's an adjuvant trial of, of the addition of ribocyclib uh, to standard endocrine treatment. Um, and uh, because we have results from large trials from the two other available uh, uh, CDK46 inhibitors, uh, actually controversial results because the Penelope B and the PALAS trial did not demonstrate the benefit for the addition of palpocyclib, whereas Monarch E demonstrated that the addition of abemacyclib will yield uh, uh, sustainable benefits for patients or also over time. And the third uh, CDK46 inhibitor ribocyclib was tested in this Natalie trial and in these very early results uh we saw very promising signals um and that's important also because natalie included not only patients at highest risks but also somewhat uh limited i would call that intermediate risk so potentially if these results are confirmed with longer follow-up that could extend the target population of that benefit to let's say maybe 30 to 35 percent of all breast cancer patients which uh, is great news in terms of uh, who can benefit on the other hand it also raises questions because for example when you have a like a 25 percent relative benefit this will translate into different magnitudes of absolute benefits uh, depending on where you are on the risk scale um, so it, in, in the high-risk population, for example, Monarchy demonstrated the 6% absolute benefit, which is something that uh, most of us will consider worthwhile and, and uh, important to go for uh, patients uh, with that uh, composition of risk factors. In the node negative uh, population, the same uh, relative benefit might translate into, let's say, 2% of absolute benefit. And then, obviously, there is a number of patients that are raised, and that's what's currently being discussed in the scientific community, particularly with these very early results. If this is ending up at 2%, uh, it's a three-year treatment. It's, uh, there are side effects associated with it. Uh, there's obviously uh, a huge cost. Uh, uh, associated with is these two percent um, then uh, worthwhile to 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 go for um, both from a tolerability but also from a health economic aspect. Um, too early to tell. Eventually, we'll have to see whether these very early results will be confirmed by future updates. I'm pretty sure that the Natalie trial will be updated at every major uh, breast cancer meeting in, in the next couple of years. But overall, very good news. In, in addition to that, I think we saw a lot of interesting research, nothing as pivotal, uh, but there was very interesting information on the impact of ovarian Function suppression, for example, particularly important in the U.S., where this treatment is still, I would say, undervalued in in general. But uh, to name another example, for example, in the Fergain study, it was shown that there is a proportion of patients that can be treated very well with uh, antibody alone, without underlying chemotherapy. So it is all around this escalation find new treatments, new innovation, new benefits for patients who are at uh, higher risk, but also de-escalation, maybe not needing all the treatments we have uh, for patients uh, that might be well off even without those treatments and thus sparing them, the patients, the side effects and society, the cost of these treatments. And so in that respect, uh, with many interesting contributions, I think that's also going to to to, to be the, the general subject of our time uh, these days when we have uh, really come to a very successful overall treatment results, but still struggling with uh, specifically identifying who is needing which treatment and who is in need of additional treatment and for whom some of the 
uh, the current treatments we have maybe left out.